With the key of David and by the sound of my voice, I prophesy healing and restoration over all watching this video. With the key of David and by the sound of my voice, I prophesy and plead the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth over our communication minds, body, spirits, and our hearts. With the key of David and by the sound of my voice, I prophesy all watching this video being baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. With the key of David and by the sound of my voice, I prophesy all watching this video coming to know the child of true humanity within you. And with the key of David and by the sound of my voice, I prophesy all watching this video coming to know the gospel and accepting the gospel of the kingdom within with an open heart and mind. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth, holy name and blood that I pray. Amen. Gospel of Mary Magdala, Jesus and the First Woman Apostle, Chapter 13, The Apostles Continue. The next sentence provides a second interpretation as in the Gospel of Mary. The mate di disciples are jealous and without understanding. The male disciples are jealous and without understanding. The Gospel of Philip again offers literal images, kissing and jealousy in order to interpret them spiritually. Kissing here apparently refers to the intimate reception of spiritual teaching. For not only does the Lord suggest that the male disciples should seek to be loved by him in the same way, but he also says, and had the word gone out from that heavenly place, it will be nourished from the mouth and it will become perfect. For it is by a kiss that the perfect conceive and give birth. For this reason, we also kiss one another. We receive conception from the grace which is in one another. Gospel of Philip, chapter 58, verse 34, chapter 59, verse 6. This explains yet again how Mary is at once mother. For she conceives and gives birth to spiritual things through the kiss his spiritual sister and companion. This portrayal confirms the special relationship of Mary Magdalene to Jesus based on her spiritual perfection. Yet at the same time that Mary Magdalene is lauded in these works, there are signs that she is becoming a center around which controversy swirls. We know that the portrayal of Mary Magdalene as an exemplary which means serving as a desirable model representing the best of its kind. As an exemplary disciple was not always linked to a positive symbolization, symbolization of the feminine or a positive view of women generally. Even texts that emphasized her prominence could portray her as a controversial figure, for example, the author of the second century dialogue of the Savior praises Mary as a woman who had understood completely the Gospel of Mary, chapter 139, verses 12 through 15. But in the same work, women are categorically associated with sexuality. The Lord said, pray in the place where there is no woman. Matthew said, pray in the place where there is no woman. He tells us meaning destroy the works of womanhood, not because there is any other manner of birth, but because they will cease giving birth. Mary said they will never be obliterated, which means destroyed. Usually scholars interpret Mary's response as a confirmation of the Savior's command to destroy the works of womanhood by ascetic which means character by, characterized by or suggesting the practice of severe self-discipline and abstention from all forms of indulgence, typically for religious reasons. Renunciation of reproduction here clearly symboled solely by the feminine. As anti-marginine has argued, this use of female gendered language to condemn the material world, sexuality and death hardly works to promote the status of women. I have registered many a difference of opinion with colleagues 
about this passage because it seems to me that Mary's response can also be read as resistance. The works of womanhood will never be obliterated. Anne Brock agrees, arguing from a different passage. In one enigmatic section of the dialogue of the Savior, the Lord explains, whatever is from the truth does not die. Whatever is from woman dies. Taken by itself, such a statement sounds misogynistic, which means strongly prejudiced against women. However, in the very next line of dialogue, when Mary asks why then she has come to this place, Jesus responds, you have come to reveal the greatness of the revealer. In other words, her purpose is not to procreate what comes from procreation, which means to beget or bring forth offspring. She is instead to be part of revealing the revealer. The Lord's statement to her, therefore, diametrically opposes claims such as those in the pastoral epistles which contend salvation does not accrue to women because they bear resemblance to Christ, but rather because they bear children. At any rate, we must be careful not to appropriate these works uncritically as feminist resources simply on the basis of a positive portrayal of Mary, for they can also employ feminine Im imagery that denigrates femaleness. The final saying in the Gospel of Thomas probably tacked onto the end of the work by a later scribe explicitly cha challenges the presence of Mary and the status of all women in the Christian community. The Gospel of Thomas saying 114, Simon Peter said to them, let Mary leave us for women are not worthy of life. Jesus said, I myself shall lead her in order to make her male. This is referring to the left and right hemispheres of our brains. We have a yin and yang sign, a yin and yang side of our brains. The yin side is female, the yang side is male, and only Jesus Christ can go inside to make the woman brain whole so that it will become male. So that she too may become a living spirit resembling you males. For every woman who will make herself male will enter the kingdom of heaven. Peter clearly wishes to exclude Mary simply on the basis of her being a woman, but Jesus defends Mary's spiritual status against the attack by suggesting that her womanhood is not a permanent impediment to salvation. In a symbol system where female codes body, sexuality, and materiality, and male codes mind and spirit too become male, means that women are expected to transcend which means rise above, which means to go up your aliyah, come up higher. Their naturally lower material natures and become spiritual beings, whether this was achieved through ascetic practice, ritual transformation, or a mythic return to an androgynous, which means partly male and partly female in appearance of inter indeterminate sex. Adamic state is unclear, but in any case, Jesus' reply destabilizes, which means damage or sabotages, the categorical fixity of gender. Women are not simply women, they are potentially, which means the capacity to develop or happen in the future. Men, they are potentially men. Sex and gender cease to be as self-evident as Peter would have it. Um... If you guys have been following my videos, you would know that there was a chapter where I spoke about our bodies, our what's male and female. Our soul does not have a gender. It is neuter, which means it has no sex. 
And yet Jesus' statement at best only moderates Peter's categorical sexism. Women as women are apparently not worthy of life. They need to become male. So this displayed Peter's jealousy of Mary. And this also displays Peter dealing in his flesh. So that is the end of this video, loves. I will pick you up in the next video. I will leave the link to the Bible in the Body playlist by I am Queen Esther at Beloved Grace Ministries and the 12 priests that this teaching of the gospel of the kingdom within was given to by Father Ahaya. I will leave it in my comment section. Shalom. I love you all. Most importantly, Jesus Christ of Nazareth loves you and peace be with you.